Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Laurie Smith on Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock here, Calgary, Alberta, May the 11th, uh, Tuesday morning. I'm happy to be here. This is One Child Abuse Survivor to Another. And we're on for 30 minutes. It's a live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com. And we'll be talking today about uh, child sexual, sexual abuse. And I found this article on Little Warriors website. It's a great website. Um, has all kinds of great information on there regarding uh, what is child sexual abuse, how to prevent child sexual abuse, um, how parents can talk to their children, uh, you know, as, as far as age appropriateness goes, uh, to help protect their children, and so the children will know what what is good touch, what is bad touch, uh, how to say no, um, and what to you know how to protect themselves and guard against this t- type of thing. Really can't leave it up to the kids. Um, it's the parents' responsibility, and then it's all of our responsibility to protect children, right? So this article is great. It's it's from www.littlewarriors.ca, and uh, you can pull that website up and check it out. It's out of Edmonton, Alberta here. Uh, Edmonton's the capital of, Al- of Alberta, and um, it's a great website. I'm so glad to see that that organization is here, a uh, not-for-profit organization working to help stop and prevent child sexual abuse. So... I would I would highly recommend everybody take a look at it. And we've been lo- talking about child sexual abuse for probably a couple weeks now. And because it's just such a huge issue, you know, the statistics are out there. And there's like, you know, just that's from the abuse that's reported. We already know that so much abuse goes unreported. And so the, that's the statistics are based on what is reported. And the, you know, the depending on where you get your stats from, they they one in 3 and one in 4 girls will be abused, uh, sexually abused before the age of 18, and that pretty much follows suit with all abuse, really. It's kind of a standard across the board, whether it's physical, verbal, emotional, psychological, sexual, you name it. Uh, One in three or four girls, and one in six or seven boys will be sexually abused before the age of of 18, Um, and that's pretty much standard with uh, all the other types of abuse as well. So it's really bad. It's really bad. You know, if you picture yourself in a room of, uh, if there's three women in the room, one of you, chances are, will have been abused or sexually abused as a child. And the same with men. If you have a room of one or six, or six if, you have, if you're in a room of six or seven men, one of you, chances are, or more, will have been abused uh, sexually or, or in, in some other way as a child under the age of 18. So that just tells you the prevalence of this. It tells you how many abusers are actually out there. For every abused child, there's someone out there abusing them. And uh, for everyone who has been abused, there was an abuser, whether it was an parent, whether it was a family friend, uh, whether it was uh, a neighbor down the street, a care, uh, like a, a daycare person, you know, someone who had access to you, uh, someone who had access to me, uh, abused us, right? So if you if you've suffered with this and you and you and you have been uh, you know uh, if you're a survivor of child abuse of any kind then you would know this but there's so many people out there who don't realize that they don't think about it and it, if if abuse doesn't touch their lives then they just don't quite get it you know what i mean they don't understand the seriousness of this and just how incredibly serious it is that we find a way to prevent this and it's going to take a long time i really believe this is not something that's going to happen overnight it's going to take a huge move on society's part here in north america uh the rest of the world's going to have to come along too but the thing is, is north america with all the uh with all the laws and the rights and the rules and the and the, and the upheld laws that are that are available you would think that there would be something uh that would work a little bit better to deter people from abusing their children whether it's sexual or physical or verbal uh, you name it, you know. There should be, I, I'm just not sure how what, what's, what's going to have to happen. Uh, because, you know, see, lots of parents just get a slap on the wrist. They get to do a couple of years' time in jail, you know, if they get actually get found guilty of abusing their child, whether it's sexually or, or in any other way. And um, a lot of times they just don't get the jail time that they deserve. And then there's all these uh, child sexual predators out there who get, you know, some of them actually do get lots of years, and that's because what they did was so heinous that they have to put them away for a long, long time. But then they eventually get out, and then, you know, they chances are they reoffend. Not every single one reoffends. That's the truth. I know that that's got, there has to be a truth to that. There's no black and white. It's not just all offend or all don't reoffend, you know. 
But we know that there is a lot that do reoffend, and so it's so important to protect your children. If you're a parent out there, you cannot do enough to protect your children. Even if you are protecting your children, they could still be abused uh, sexually by someone even right under your nose. It could be someone in the family. It could be a family friend who has befriended you, and, and, and you just love this person, and you would trust them with your life. So you trust them with your children's lives, and then they abuse your children. Um, I'm telling you, you need to get the facts. You need to be aware of what's going on and how to keep your children safe, right? Because this is happening, people. Uh, more kids than you know will be abused today uh, at the hands of someone who, who they trust and who they know. 90% of children are abused by someone that they actually know and trust. Uh, that's bad. This means it's somebody in the family, somebody who's close to the family, like family friends or whatever, and so or teachers, you know, lots of teachers out there sexually molesting and, and sexually abusing children and uh, lots of people involved in the school system because this is how they have access to your child. You have to think about it. Where is my child all day? Who has access to my child? And are they abusing my child? This is the questions that should be going on through par in parents' minds. And it shouldn't be a fear-based thing because fear will get you nowhere. Education will get you somewhere. And education is the key. I really believe that. Everyone needs to become educated and, and understand what's happening and know and learn how to protect your children. Get on some of these great websites like Little Warriors. Get on the FBI's website. They have some great information on there. They are trying to shut these people down. They're trying to do their best they can to bust these people. But it's a lot of work. It's hard. It, there's so many of them. They're like little uh, cockroaches. They're everywhere. Uh, child sexual predators are everywhere, and they are, they are, they're like a scourge on society. They're like little cockroaches. They know how to hide, and, uh, you know, they need to be stomped out, right? But in, not in a violent way, because I don't, I don't promote violence. Um, I don't promote abuse. So what I do is I promote justice, and I promote law. I think that the laws need to change. I think that there needs to be stiffer, stiffer sentences, and people need to start waking up to the fact that this is happening. And uh, if you know of a child that's being uh, abused, you have to report it. That's a lot of it. A lot of people don't report abuse because they don't want to get involved or they don't want the family to be broken up. So they allow the child to be abused, uh, whether it's sexually, physically, verbally, emotionally, you name it. Um, and that's wrong. It's just as bad as being the abuser yourself because you're allowing it to happen. So if you know of a child who's being abused, it's against the law to not report it. Just keep that in mind. And also, it should be in your heart that you'd want to protect that child from a nightmare of abuse that they're have be, you know, having to live through and that they will have to learn to live through later on in life. And uh, many don't have that ability and they end up killing themselves or, or they kill other people or, you know, they just cannot adjust, right? So depending on the severity of the abuse and what happened to them. So you need to make sure that you, if you see or know of a child who's being abused, that you report it. It's so important. So we're going to get right on with this. I'm not a professional. I don't have any professional counseling certificates or anything like that. You know, I just do my blog talk show because I really believe that I just want to be one more voice. You know, and I believe that we just need to all of us need to start talking about abuse, uh, child abuse especially, and you know the issues of domestic violence and whatnot. We just can't talk about it enough. And also, you know, if you're a young person under the age of 18, you should have an adult check this show out. Make sure it's okay for you to listen to it. There's a lot of adult content on here. And I fight for child rights. I'm fighting for your life, really. Uh, it might sound like a joke, but I'm so serious. There's a whole bunch of out, uh, there's a whole bunch of us out here who are fighting for children's lives, and so you need to keep yourself safe online. And whatever you're doing online, if you're just not so sure about it, you need to have an adult know what you're doing, and and, and then they can help you make the decision whether you should be listening to it or not. Uh, especially shows like this. There's a lot of adult content. Make sure it's age appropriate and. If you're really young, if you're a young person, you want to have someone listen to this with you who can help you find the, the answers to the questions that you might have regarding the, the topic information. And just to keep yourself safe, you're, you're, you know, you're, if, you're, if you don't have a parent who cares, which I know so often we don't, my, neither one of my parents gave a, a two hoots about us. Uh, there were seven uh, siblings in my home, and they really didn't care at all about any seven of us. We, they didn't care if we lived or died or what happened to us, and so you know there was no protection period uh, from them either because they were our main abusers. So I know that many times children don't have a good parent, you know, or a caregiver at home. So find a teacher, a counselor, a school guidance person, someone who you trust and who's been in your life and. Uh, you know that, that you do trust and you think they have a good head on your shoulders maybe they can listen to the show with you and just make sure it's something you should be listening to and then make sure you stay safe online I can't repeat that enough I'll just keep saying that every day you know for children to make sure you are you know keep yourself safe online and don't give out any personal information period 
Don't use your real name online. Don't meet these people that you meet in these chat rooms. You know, they say they're 12 years old and they, they, they like to skateboard and they have a dog and they love to go to the mall. But then, you know, you meet them at, after school and it turns out to be a child sexual predator. So that's what we're talking about today, 15 lures of sexual predators. And this is off of Little Warriors. It's a, about child sexual abuse, www.littlewarriors.ca, and 15 lures of sexual predators. And we'll start with the first one, affection lure. Well, there's affection lure, assistance lure, right? Authority lure. We went, we started this sort of looking at it um, yesterday morning. So we're going to read through them. Abusers rely on trickery and deceit to achieve their goals in approaching and, and seducing their victims. Read the 15 commonly used lures to learn more about how you can proactively protect your children, right? Now, this is what a child sexual predator will use to lure and to attract your child uh, to get a hold of your child so that they can sexually abuse them or do whatever they do, which they could kill them then because they don't want the uh, they don't want to be found out for who they are. Um, so you want to protect your children and you want to know what people are doing out there to get a hold of your children, right? So affection lure is most acts of molestation are committed by a person known and trusted by the child, right? So they show a lot of affection toward the child, and you might think, oh, isn't that sweet? Look at Uncle Joe; he just loves. He just loves his little niece, you know what I mean, or his little nephew, and there's all this affection between them, right? And Or it could be a friend of the family, you know, the friend down the street who just loves your kids. Uh, you want to make sure <laughs> that they aren't loving them in the wrong way, you know what I mean? Uh, because you can't trust everybody. You really can't trust anybody until they prove themselves trustworthy with your children. Um, because, honestly, there's there's... The FBI's website, I'm telling you, you have to go check it out at the, the FBI. They have a great website on online safety, and they, they have statistics out there of just how many millions, I'm talking millions, of child sexual predators are online every single night trying to get a hold of children in one way or another. So, I'm telling you what, don't trust the guy down the street who loves your kids, you know, until he proves himself trustworthy. Do not leave your children unattended with people that you just think are so wonderful because they love your kids. Because they could be hurting and harming your child. You wouldn't even know it because of, you know, a lot of times children will not come forward and say anything out of fear or they've been threatened or they're so ashamed that they can't if they're older children. Uh, if they're young, they might think there's nothing wrong with it and think it's a game. And so I'm telling you what, you better get the education if you're a parent and you're listening to this. Assistance lure. The methods are unlimited and are meant to entice children away from safety. The offender may pretend to be disabled and in need of a helping hand, which children are usually too willing to offer. So, you know, someone could pretend they need help with something. Oh, can you help, my, help me carry my groceries to my door, um, you know, to the car or whatever? Or if it's some, someone might drop something and have the kid help them pick it all back up and then snag them. Um, you know, they just pretend that they need assistance, right? And then there's authority lure. Children are taught to respect and obey adults. The offender takes advantage of that respect and obedience by using their positions as coaches, clergy, parents, scout leaders, etc. to intimidate or force children into sexual exploitation or abduction. So that's just it. So you generally, a lot of these child sexual predators um, are upstanding citizens within the community. Now that's just a fact. Uh, they, you know, they are very manipulative. They know how to... Uh, fake you out, they know how to fake the system out, and they know how to how to get a hold of children. So they generally want to work around children because that's how they're going to get have access to children. So that's why you see a lot of teachers are are, are sexually abusing children nowadays. Um, it probably was going on a lot, you know, I'm sure it's been going on since time began, but uh, no one started was really talking about it. But now it's out in the news. People are starting to open up and, and break the silence, which is awesome. And um, you know, the, the whole issue is, is these are people in authority who, with, you know, who seem like upstanding citizens. And hey, look at this! They're the, it's the principal of the school. I mean, if you start looking in the paper and on the news, you can start to see that uh, there's lots of people getting busted with lots of ch uh, child pornography, and there's quite a few of them that are like principals of schools. So that where do you think they get this stuff? You know what I mean? They, these people have to have access to your child, whether it's physical access or online access. And so the whole issue is, is you got to wonder who your child is around and what they're doing all day. If you want to prevent this from happening to your child, then you need to know where your child is, who's around them, and who has access to them at all times. And then you need to start doing your homework because there's lots of child sexual predators who work, you know, all in all kinds of different jobs where, you know, they could have access to your child and either that or try to get a hold of them online, right? And you wouldn't even know it. So that's the whole issue, right? It's so important to 
to protect your kids, right? And the next one is bribery lure. This is uh, bribes such as candy, money, and drugs are used to entice or manipulate children into situations and or settings where sexual contact and activity can be initiated. So yeah, they'll they'll bribe them, you know, with money and and things. And usually these these people groom their, their these these kids, right? They groom their victims. The first they start out just by talking real nice, and oh, they're just they understand everything they're going through. And a lot of times they pretend that they're close to their age, so they can get access to them a little easier that way. Um, and then all of a sudden they start giving them, you know, money and candy and different things like that, or whatever. You know, nowadays it would be like uh, CDs or you know those those game uh, those those I don't even know what they're called, but like Xbox games, you know what I mean? All that stuff that kids like to play with, uh, you know, as far as video games and whatnot. And not even called video games anymore. That's how out of it I am. But the thing is, is um, you know, they will use whatever they can that they know children like, you know, to 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 lure them by bribing them, right? And that that's kind of common. Actually, I, I mean, that's something you should tell your your kids. You know, don't don't accept things from strangers. Don't accept gifts from strangers. And and don't and and if somebody even in the family tries to bribe you into doing something that you don't want to do, you, you children have to learn how to say no. If you don't teach your child how to say no, and you just tell them, oh no, you have to do everything that all the adults say, every adult, you just have to do exactly what they say, you know, and, and you drill that into your kid's head. Um, next time some child sexual predator comes along and says, no, you have to do this because your parents told you to listen to everything an adult says, uh, that child's going to be like, oh, I guess I do. And they're going to go along with it. You know what I mean? So you have to make sure that you have this little talk with your children at the right you know, age appropriateness. Check out these websites like Little Warriors to find out at just what age a parent should start talking to their children and how to go about doing it. You don't want to instill fear. Fear is a horrible way to live. And uh, fear is no good. It's abuse, really. Um, causing your children to be afraid. I mean, uh, you know, that's just almost as bad as being uh, abused as a child and living in fear. So you don't want your children to live in fear. What you want is education and awareness, you know, and to create a world that they realize that uh, this is happening and that uh, they can help to keep themselves safe, right, by just doing a few simple things. And then they'll feel better about things instead of, you know, you don't want to scare them. That's no good because that's, that's a horrible way to live. Uh, ego, fame, lure. Molesters use compliments and offers to fame and fortune to lure children into abuse or abduction. Children may be offered private additions and, and told to keep it a secret from their, their parents. Now, that's something I think people need to be aware of because, you know, people love the whole idea of being famous and uh, little kids especially love that whole idea of thinking, not little, small, too small children, but, you know, younger youth, right? They would think that is so cool if somebody said, hey, you can join our, our group. There's a whole bunch of us. We go around city to city and we do all this stuff. And But don't tell your parents, you know. And, you know, this could happen. And I, I just wonder how many of the, how much, how many people are using that on these uh, these situations with these children that are missing today. Um, because there's actually groups, you know, that advertise in the papers. And I've seen it, you know, where it's youth groups. And you just wonder how many of those youth groups that they advertise that they go from city to city to do all this stuff are actually legitimate or not. Because young kids might phone those numbers and, and talk to these people, and then they'd be like, oh, yeah, come to our meeting. It's next week uh, uh, after school. And then they meet up with these people, and we never see them again. You know what I mean? And the parents are searching still, you know, 5, 10 years, 20 years later. So you just wonder how much of that isn't. Um, being uh, isn't some sort of a, a, se a child's sex trade ring or something, you know what I mean? Like that's that's something to be aware of, right? And uh, you know, this is what kids need to know: is that these people can use these things to trick them and to abuse them sexually or any other way, right? So so important to have, you know, to let your children know this stuff, especially when they're old enough to understand this stuff, right? Emergency lure. This is used by abductors to confuse or worry the child. The child is then easily manipulated due to their anxiety and fear. And that's something like, you know, if if uh, you know they they might run up to a child and say, "Oh, your mom's been hurt," and if you you know they might uh, even know the child's name, right? This might be somebody who knows the family, right? And the child might be walking home from school, and then all of a sudden somebody comes up to them and says, "Oh, your your mom's been hurt. She's, all your family's at the hospital, and I'm supposed to take you." And of course, off they go. They they take the child and. Um, that's why that's so bad because these kids are, as soon as they hear that, they freak out because, oh, mom's in the hospital, something happened, something bad. And so they trust this person, right, because they're like, oh, yes, I want to go to the hospital to see my mom. And uh, see, that's just wrong, wrong, wrong. 
Um, but we know that it happens, and I know the FBI and stuff, they report a lot on this stuff. Um, and, you know, that this is happening. People use these types of, of lures to get children, and it's just horrible. Fun and games lure offenders may suggest innocent body contact games, such as tickling or wrestling to facilitate, facilitate sexual contact. And that's right, and that's why you have to watch out, Like, if, especially if your child is playing with um, an older adult and and uh and, you know, whether it's a family member or not, it could be a friend of the family or a family member or someone, and it starts to get a little bit kind of frisky, and they start doing some, some touching and stuff like that, and pretty soon, you know, you know you got to keep an eye on that, right? You should know what your children are doing and who they're doing stuff with, right? It's so important because this can happen, right? The hello lure, oh, I'm sorry, the hero, <laughs> I can't read this one. The hero lure, molesters may abuse a child's adoration for them, using it to molest and or, or abduct them. Right, so they they might pretend they're, they're they're like this hero and and that you know they're they're this great person and the hero in their life sort of thing could be somebody who who the child looks up to you know and 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 thinks highly of right and then they they use that to their advantage. See, all these people are these child sexual predators are very manipulative. That's how they get away with what they do and molest you know hundreds of kids. I think I forget what the average was. I I, I know there's an average of how many children that a child sexual predator will actually ha be allowed to sexually abuse uh, before they get busted. And I think it's around 100. I'm not quite sure, but I know it's somewhere close to that. And that is disgraceful. It's just disgusting. It's wrong. And I'm telling you, where were the parents in this situation? Why was no one looking in on this? You know what I mean? And you just can't. It's not a safe world anymore. It never was. You know, I, used, I, I was almost abducted five times in my lifetime. But my parents didn't give a crap, so that's all right. But the thing is, is thank God there was other people, neighbors and different people who saved me. You know what I mean? Um, but you can't just allow your kids to just wander through life without knowing what's going on. And, it's you know, it's good to see kids become independent and be able to do stuff on their own and stuff. But make sure that it's, it's age appropriate. And, and it's this world is a very scary place, you know, and it always has been. There's never been a time where it's been, you know, I, if you look back in history and actually do some reading, um, you can find out that, you know, the world has been a scary place forever. And, you know, children have always been... Uh, uh, you know, victims, right, of every kind of abuse you can think of. But the thing is, is now we're starting to get a little bit smarter. It's taken thousands of years, of course, for everybody to get off their butts and do something about this. But we, we're just on the break, groundbreaking level, really. And all the people that came before that have just, re you know, in the last, I don't know, 20, 40 years or 60 years or so, to start speaking out against abuse, you know, they're sort of laid the ground, the ground for us, right? And now we're going to have to just keep on going. And the whole issue is, is people just need to make sure that they really understand that this is happening, and they could save their child from getting a hold of a child sexual predator who's already abused a hundred children, right? I mean, this is crazy, but this is it. They're very manipulative. They know how to do it. They they become pros, right? They know exactly how to do it. They spend their time uh, online, you know, working every night. Just It's like a job to them, right? They go home from their regular day job and they start working and groom your child. And then, you know, if it's not, if it's not, if it's someone in the family who's abusing your child, that's just someone who needs, who's, who's sick and needs help. And, um, you know, that's the whole issue. Child sexual abuse is a real problem. And, uh, you know, people got to know that 90%, uh, like I said before, 90%, of child sexual abusers, that the the children know them and they trust them. It's, so it's usually somebody in the family or a family member, you know. And I'm I'm a victim of child molestation, uh, my by a family member. So you know, my parent, my mom knew about it because I told her nothing was done. She did not care. And so this is just it. You cannot do that to your children. You have to protect them, even from a family member, right? Doesn't matter who that family member. It might be Uncle Joe, Grandma Sue. You know what I mean? <clears throat> And, like, so they'll be missed at the barbecues during the summer while they're doing some time for abusing your child. But the whole thing is, is they need to do time. Justice has to be served. I don't care who they are. You know, and as much as the family probably loves these people, they sexually abused a child. And it's wrong. It's against the law. has to be reported. And you can get that child some help then, right? And you can get the other person some help because it's obvious that there's a problem there if they're abusing your child, you know what I mean, sexually or in any other way. So it's a huge problem. We have to start stepping up to the plate and turning these people in. Lots of people will allow, if you look at the reports in the papers, which is crazy, um, they just allow these abusers to live in their home and abuse their children. It, it, it's coming out in the papers. It, there's reports all over the place. Um, 
of women and, and especially women who will allow someone uh, an abusive man to live with them who uh, who abuses them and they know is abusing their children sexually and they allow it Be, yeah, for whatever reason they're just sick or something mentally wrong with that person right and so who pays the price the children do but it seems to me that somebody would have had to so, sort of know that that's going on. If you see somebody uh, who's a little bit mentally ill and they have a couple of kids, you know, and they, they're not coping well and they're being abused themselves, and then you know that they have somebody living with them who's an abuser, you better start to be wondering what's happening to those kids. You know what I mean? That's the problem. So, see, abuse is just a real problem because no one wants to deal with it. And so even to the point of letting children stay in an abusive environment and, and be abused, right? So I just think everyone, you know, if you, if anyone knows of somebody who's being abused and they don't report it, they're just as guilty as the person doing it, if not more guilty, because they have the, they have the power to stop it and to change it, and they don't. And they sit there, and I don't know how they can sleep at night, to be honest with you. Uh, there's a job lure. The offer of a short-term job or errand may be used to molest or abduct, abduct a child. Adolescents and even college students may be attracted by promises of high-paying or interesting jobs. Name recognition lure. Marking clothes and other belongings with the child's name enables the offender to call the child by name, creating a false sense of familiarity and security. So you don't want to put your kids' names in their clothes and on their lunchbox, right? Not a good idea. Playmate companion lure. The victim may be encouraged or coerced by the offender to usher other children into an abusive setting. And pornography lure. Many child molesters routinely expose their intended victims to pornography, thus normalizing sexual activity and setting the stage for seduction. And really, that's what society is doing right now with commercials. Anytime you see a commercial of uh, young people in seductive poses selling any kind of uh, uh, you know, item on the market, like whether it's jeans, watches, uh, you know, you name it, cars, whatever. <laughs> um, it just normalizes uh, child sexuality and, it, and it, it makes society think, hey, it's okay, we can all have sex with children. That There's whole groups out there trying to get the law changed so that they can have sex with children. Um, so this is what I'm saying, people. It's a real problem. It's just not getting any better. It's actually getting worse. And we have to look out for children. You know what I mean? We have to protect them. Threats and fear alert. Molesters may blackmail or threaten children into co cooperation or silence. They may even confront the child with an actual weapon, like, you know, get in the car or I'll shoot you sort of thing. And, uh, you know, that's, that's good. that does happen. It happened to me. Um, a, a guy walked off with me. I was at a, I was at a uh, state fair, and this guy grabbed my arm and, and was grabbed. He sort of had his hold on me really tight, and I couldn't get away. And I was thinking, oh, my God, this guy's walking off with me. And I saw this lady, and I was starting to get, like, to the panicking to the point where I was going to scream. But he was telling me, don't scream, don't scream. And so I was freaking out. And this lady saw, sort of took a look at me, and she could see my eyes, I guess. I was pretty freaked out. And I told her, I said, Mom, and she said, let, let go of my daughter, right? She clued in right away. And the guy was like, hey, I wasn't even touching her. And I'm, it jumped away from me, see? And she's like, she, so she reported that this guy had done this, but he was gone. He was long gone, right? And that's just one case. I mean, I was nearly kidnapped five times. So I'm telling you what, you cannot protect your children enough, right? There's a drug lure. Molesters will often use drugs, especially alcohol, to inca incapacitate or seduce children. The lure of drugs is often used in, in conjunction with pornography. That's something to be especially aware of because young kids, you know, especially, you know, nowadays young, young kids will experiment with drugs and, and alcohol and stuff like that. If they know an older teen or an older youth, you know, or someone who's older who can who has access to this stuff, they can use it to abuse them, right? And then computer online lure. Some molesters are actually logging on to the Internet to chat with thousands of children, ultimately luring some into dangerous situations. There's actually millions. The FBI has gotten tabs on it. There's millions and millions of child sexual predators online at any given time. So you really have to protect your children in every way. We've got about a minute left, and I'm the Canada Regional Director for Dreamcatchers for Abused Children. Please check out our website, http dreamcatchersforabusedchildren.com. We have updates every day. It's like the website's updated daily, and uh, there's all kinds of great information on there on how to protect your children as well. Uh, the signs and symptoms of child sexual abuse, of every kind of abuse, it's it's a good website for people who are looking for information and, and looking for resources and, and stuff like that. There's all kinds of links on there. And then uh, make sure you tune in. I'll be back um, tomorrow morning, one child abuse survivor to another. But I'll be back on tonight with Donna Shear on Dreamcatchers Talk Radio. And that's tonight, 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
um, with Donna Shear, the president of Dream Catchers for Abused Children, and, and uh, it's for an hour. And I hope you can join us if you want to. If you want to come on the show and, and join us, and if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to get a hold of us. And everybody, have a great day. You know, my heart is with you, and, and just keep reaching out. You know, don't give up, and don't suffer in silence. Make sure you, that you keep reaching out and keep that hope alive. It's so important. You know, I mean, we can, we, we, we deserve a good life, and we don't deserve to suffer in silence, right? And uh, I think silence is the huge, the biggest problem, really, uh, because it allows abusers to go free, and it allows us survivors to suffer in silence, right? So uh, just keep reaching out and get some help, right? Okay, everybody, have a great day. Talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.